Hey guys! So, there is this book. It was written by James Stewart, who was a master hairdresser in London. It was published in 1782 and it is called Ploca Cosmos, or The Whole Art of Hairdressing, wherein is contained ample rules for the young artisan, more particularly for ladies' women, valets, etc., etc., as well as directions for persons to dress their own hair. It goes on and on with the history of the hair and headdress, complete rules for the management of children, and for the preservation of the health and happiness of age. Basically, this was a hairdresser who just needed to get stuff off his chest, apparently. It's honestly quite funny when you just kind of flip through this book and you open it on a random page. It has the most random topics and every other page is about something completely different. The whole thing is on archive.org, so I'll put a link in the description box if you want to go and read it if you have too much time on your hands, I don't know. But it contains a very thorough and detailed description of how to dress the hair. And I'm gonna try and follow it today. Now, of course, I have followed historical beauty tutorials before, but they have always been in video form and I'm quite a visual person. So it's going to be quite interesting and quite challenging, mostly, to follow a written hair tutorial. The description of the hairdressing itself is over 50 pages long and it is in English, which is great because most of these from this time period are in French and my French isn't good enough to be able to read an 18th century book. I am a bit worried that this video is gonna take like five hours. <laughs> Filming is gonna take a long time in any case, I'm gonna see how much I'm able to edit it down. Honestly, as to the directions for persons to dress their own hair, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna read it to you. I would inform those ladies who wish to dress their own hair that they will find it troublesome and tedious, as well as exceeding tiresome for the arms, and straining for the eyes, sometimes not only making them tender, but even bloodshot. Those who are willing to surmount those difficulties and can spare two or three hours with patience and perseverance may in time, by practice, make some progress and proficiency. Don't do it, but if you're stubborn, then it's probably gonna suck. <laughs> that is pretty much um, the gist of the whole do your own hair portion of the book. He pretty much says just follow the instructions that I gave for dressing another person's hair and you're gonna do it badly. She would do well also to seat herself between two glasses or at least have a hand glass to refer to as often as wanted. You wanna you know, check if your hair looks good from the back. It being almost always the contrary when ladies dress their own hair and which generally has an exceeding awkward appearance. It would appear that dressing the hair was done as a whole so you would have someone come and that included cleaning cutting and styling and it kind of tells you how to cut the hair and it basically what i believe it comes down to is that you need to cut the hair into essentially a mullet pretty much it needs to be short in front and then get longer as you proceed towards the back there is only so much i'm going to do for youtube videos and cutting my hair into an 18th century mullet isn't one of those things. So I'm gonna have to work with my long hair, I'm afraid. It's not gonna look as authentic as it might have had I cut my hair short. Now, throughout the cutting process, he already starts applying the first layer of pomade and powder. So I'm gonna go into this um, tutorial with pomaded and powdered hair as well. And for that, I have got some supplies here. I got some pomade. It is based on petroleum jelly. 18th century pomade would have been made with animal fats, but obviously um, that's not vegan and kind of grosses me out a little bit. It should pretty much do the same thing. It smells really nice. James here talks about hard pomade and soft pomade. I am guessing that this is more on the side of hard pomade. It doesn't really matter that much what you use as long as it sticks because that is the base for your powder. This is just plain flour and that is actually pretty historically correct. I have put it in a little shaker bottle so that it is easier for me to apply. I'm gonna need something that will act like a powder puff. He recommends using a goose down powder puff. I think I'm just gonna use a fluffy makeup brush for that maybe. That is what I have been doing in previous 18th century hair videos and it works pretty well I think. I've gotten myself a hairdressing cape so that I don't get powder all over myself. Just seemed like a good idea. So basically what I need to do at first is just make sure that every single strand of hair that I have on my head is covered in pomade and powder and then comb it out. Let's start with the pomade. Never used this before. 
I think we're almost there. I made a nice dent in my pomade. It is time to move on to powder. As with the pomade, I now need to make sure that every single strand of hair is completely coated in powder. Apparently the powder is going to suck up all of that grease from the pomade. I know it seems kind of weird and counterintuitive to make the hair greasy, only to then degrease it again with powder, but it has to do with the longevity of the hairstyle. People would wear this for weeks on end before cleaning their hair. I'm gonna do this to my entire head of hair and then I'll be back again. All right, here is the result. Am I crazy for saying this is actually really pretty? I just, I really like the way this looks. The more powder you layer on top, the lighter it becomes or the more kind of grayish. My hair is still pretty brown at this point, but you're supposed to kind of add more powder every day. It should get progressively lighter as time goes by. But yes, step one is done. James says the hair is now cut and ready for curling. I will first recommend putting it in papers. You are therefore, it is to be supposed, furnished with a proper quantity of French curling paper. Take the paper and with your large scissors cut it into pieces four inches square. Cut them transverse like a half handkerchief, which are the most convenient and answer all sizes best. So I have done a bit of research and apparently modern day tissue paper is the closest thing to 18th century curling paper. Found myself some tissue paper and I'm gonna cut it into little curling paper triangles in order to curl my hair. I have no idea how much an inch is because <laughs> I'm European and we have a metric system here. I think I'm gonna go with this size. My hair in the front is supposed to be super short, like half an inch above my forehead and then four inches right around here. Begin in the middle, that is directly in front. Make a small parting, not wider than three quarters of an inch. My comb looks disgusting by the way, it's all crusted up with pomade, flour mixture and hair. Put this hair away. I think the hair cannot dress well unless there is a good curl in the points. I would recommend the back row to be curled instead of creped. The parting you have in your hand, I would have four rows deep. That is four papers in a regular row under each other. Oh, right. So I think we're only doing the top of the hair here. I'm just gonna divide this into four sections, I think. Since if my hair was cut correctly, the back hair would be the longest. He recommends curling that and then creping all of the others. Okay, so he recommends curling this around the end of a tail comb. I'm not entirely sure what a 18th century tail comb looks like, so I'm gonna use this and just assume it is pretty much the right size, I hope. So he says, the back one, which is the first you do, must be curled as I mean from the end of the tail comb. Your constant care must be to do everything so as not to tease or puzzle you. And without great care, the papering certainly will. I agree, I'm already teasing puzzled. <laughs> In order to remedy this as well as you can, after you have parted your back paper, you must draw the fine teeth of your comb through it while you hold it in your hand. I think I am supposed to just smooth out the hair and hold it high. While you thus hold the hair with your hand, leaning back, let the end of the tail comb Press between the finger and thumb of your left hand over the points of the hair and when you have drawn it to the extreme points, turn it quick over till it has catch. Then roll the tail comb up to the roots of the hair as close as can be to the head. My hair is way too long, I think, to execute this technique properly. Then apply again the finger and thumb of your left hand to guide and keep the curl firm while you draw the tail comb out, which you will easily do if well done. That looks good. You have now got the curl passed between your finger and thumb. Lay the tail comb down, take a paper and press the edge of it close to the head and to your left finger and thumb, which has hold of the curl. With the paper and curl being in this position, turn over the end of the paper upon the curl. By that means, you take hold of the curl with your right finger and thumb, the paper being between both. That is, under and over the curl in the right hand. Therefore, turn the other end of the paper with your left thumb tied over the neck of the curl, then bring both ends beyond the curl, twist them very firmly, and so let it go. I have no idea. I have no idea. The next curl is to be twisted or craped. You have now separated it as before directed. I have indeed. And are to dip the finger and thumb of each hand in brick dust or pipe ashes or anything gritty 
um, I think flower will do. Then you must roll or twist the hair in a regular direction as if tw twisting a peck thread or fringed silk. This you must do between the finger and thumb of both hands till it rolls itself up to a final twisted ball. Oh my gosh, this is going to take all night. It is already four o'clock. I have been at this well over an hour and a half, I think even more. You must then draw it with some strength in order to make it firmer and then with the points of your finger and thumb of your right hand compress it and roll it up down to the head. Then take it between the finger and thumb of your left hand and apply the paper with your right as before directed. Oh, come on. Don't die on me now. Oh my god, what am I supposed to do with these papers? I'm pretty sure this isn't it. The other two are to be done in the same manner, but very close to the head, standing upright with their heads bending backwards. It cannot take less than 16 or 18 papers for the front row to be well done. And the same proportion all the way backwards. I'm not gonna do the whole creping thing, because it's just not meant for my length of hair. It's not gonna look good. And it's not gonna do what it is supposed to. So I'm gonna just finish. Oh, I can actually do it with my bangs. Because these are short. Yeah, that took like <laughs> a tenth of the time that it took me to do that other one. I kept reading and he suggests as an alternative to using the curling papers to use a toupee iron. A toupee iron, which is essentially a very old curling iron. So I think I'm gonna do that. You are essentially to do pink girls with a curling iron. And I think that's gonna be much easier, much quicker for me to do than trying to do these paper curls. Here we are. This is how far back I went with my curls. They aren't as consistent as they should be, but I just... I can't. <laughs> the hair being now both in papers and curled with the toupee irons, check. For the present, we will leave them to make up the chignon or hair behind. And then he describes that you should pomade and powder the back of the hair, which I have already done. He doesn't describe what to do if you don't want to use a false chignon. Okay, maybe I'm just gonna skip that step since I'm not using a false chignon, I hope. He'll come back to the rest of that hair later, and if not, I'm gonna have to improvise. We left the front curl in papers and by the toupee irons. Looking upon this last operation as of the least consequence, we will go on with them first. Between each turning, you must rub into the head a little pomatum, as before told, and to each of them powder sufficient. And then, before you take any of the pins out, Rub a little soft pomatum, well broken your hands all over them, and after that beat, beat the swan down puff full of powder over them. What's a turn? The first row you turned, you must first frizz. Oh, wait, okay, between each curl, I guess. So I am to take down my curls, put on more pomade and powder. This is so hard to understand. Okay, but I haven't done my curl papers yet, so I'm gonna take out my straightening iron and pinch them. If I understand correctly, I had to I had to put a few bobby pins in because they were all falling out. If I understand correctly, what I'm supposed to do is take this whole thing and pinch it with my straightening iron, which would have been um, an actual iron that had been sitting in the fire throughout all the process that is what's described in the book. And I am to hold it until it smokes, but I honestly don't think that is necessary. This is the weird ball shaped one. Ow. This part I am absolutely certain I'm doing all wrong. This cannot be right. Okay, uh, it's time for the teasing now. So wait, let me just put back this pin because this is all wrong. I'm gonna have to start in the back because I'm gonna be teasing and I need to tease like the next row onto the back one. As the hair is held in the left hand, Grasp your dressing comb in the right about the middle of the comb, leaving all the small teeth to frizz or perform their office. You must hold the comb with a considerable degree of strength while the wide end of it is pressed by all your four fingers in a row towards the root of your thumb. It from root to point presses equally the comb back to them on the other side, but neither finger nor thumb descending further down the teeth than the very roots or stamina of the comb. The hair and comb thus held 
the hair you hold about 5 inches from the head, you must put the comb into the hair close to your left hand and beat it in a regular succession down to the roots of the hair till you, as it were, weave it into a mat. I can understand that. No idea what the first part means, but I'm just supposed to tease it until it forms a mat. <laughs> I can do that. Remembering to do it effectually, the left hand is to exert itself exceedingly against the efforts of the right. But great pains must be taken that it is not reduced in length but appears as long as it really is. There is a double reason for this firmness, as without it, the hair would not have a proper consistency to stand erect and keep together, and at the same time appear to have the full length it originally had. If it is well done, it appears like a stripe of hair cloth, well wove, transparent yet strong, and stand as high as the length of hair. I have a curl. I hope this doesn't ruin the curl, because I can very well see that happening. I'm not going to be able to retain this length because <laughs> it is actually longer than my arm and even the 18th century hairstyles weren't that high so I'm just gonna maybe start a little bit lower and then leave the ends just curled and be a nice cascade of curls I guess Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm starting to worry a little bit that this might actually not come out for two months like it is supposed to and I'm not entirely sure that is what I'm going for <laughs> not too shabby so far Before you proceed further, it may be necessary to part the curls, as the full dress now is in three curls. We will part them as such, having it in our power at all times to take one or two into the toupee, either as half dress or undress. Oh, I think those are names of um, popular hairstyles. And the full dress is supposed to have three curls in it. With the wide end of the comb, draw a line three inches back from the front hair at the ear, slanting from the crown of the head, inclining to the top of the ear. The line should advance from the ear near 4 inches, more or less, towards the back. Parting so as the top of this division is about 6 inches, more or less, from the center of the forehead. Then he describes a particularly complicated way of forming the curls. So I think I just need to separate this into three. Oh my gosh, this is so hard! Take the pomatum, frizz it with the pomatum from root to end. By the way, apologies to anyone who is horrified um, at watching this. I don't much mind myself, I know my hair will bounce back, but I know some people are going to hate seeing this. So, powder, frizz it over afresh. When this is done, take a little soft pomatum and bathe the curl in your hands from the ends to the roots. Then use a proper quantity of powder till the black or greasy look entirely vanishes. After that, frizz it firmly all along with your comb stuffed with hard pomatum, then a little powder, then stripe firmly your hard pomatum along the curls from the roots to the... Okay, wait, so comb, hard pomatum, frizz it again. This really is quite disgusting, guys, I have to say. And then again, with a little powder. I mean, how is this still referred to as a curl? <laughs> then I am to take the pomatum again. And I guess smooth out the outsides. And then roll it up close to the head. And pin it. If well done, it appears like a slip of buck or doe skin. Does it? <laughs> The two others are to be done the same, and I'm supposed to do that on both sides. Alright, they don't look as pretty as they should, but if you look closely, <laughs> my curls are there on both sides. The curls of each side being thus far done, the front is to be finished, frizzing in every row quite to the face as before directed. When thus frizzed, if clearly and well done, it looks like a quick set hedge in June but instead of growing perpendicularly, slanting regularly away from the face. Quick set hedge in June is the look we're going for. <laughs> I 
I am really curious to see what these curl papers did though. Uh, okay, what exactly is that? I'll just roll with it. <laughs> By the way, I just stopped for a minute to have some dinner. He wasn't wrong, you know, about not recommending you do this on yourself. Because this is quite an intense process. But we're getting there. We are getting there. Oh my, this is even worse. Look at that. But I can see how this would help with the teasing. Look at that. <sighs> my arms. My arms hurt so bad. But at this point, he starts talking about curls that I am supposed to have on my head still, which I don't, and I have no idea which curls. Either I am not getting it at all, or this is super inconsistent, or a little bit of both. <laughs> anyway, I feel like at this point, what I'm supposed to do is to just kind of smooth this. I need a little bit of pomade. Up. By the way, look at this little piece of band here, looking super authentic. That is kind of the short bit of hair that I had in the front that I twisted the way I was supposed to, and it looks exactly like 18th century hair in paintings and things like that, which is quite cool. And then there is talk of a cushion that I can use. I think I'm just gonna pin it in the back here and kind of leave these curls loose. I feel like that could look quite nice if they kind of cascade like that. I'm sorry, I'm totally deviating from the tutorial now, but at, at this point I honestly have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I just, I don't get it at all anymore. And also at this point, I am determined to make this look good because I have spent a considerable amount of time and effort on doing this and I just want to make it look nice. Oh, I really wish it all looked like this. Look how good this looks. I still have a lot of hair down here, so I'm gonna skip to the part where he deals with what I believe to be this hair because I've completely lost where we are right now. And I realize how silly that sounds, but try reading this, it is absolutely impossible to follow unless you know what you are supposed to be doing. You now proceed to do the hair up behind, in which there is many ways, as the hair is now held, and such pains taken with it. Particularly if there is no short hairs in the neck, there is no occasion for tying. Therefore, to do it in one plate, plait, it must be parted in three even divisions and each division pretty well smoothed and combed then with a little soft pomatum on the hands to lull the straggling hairs. You proceed to plait it by first dividing pretty well each slip from the other, then cross from the left first and so on in one plate. I can definitely braid my hair. That is not a problem at all. I think I'm just gonna keep going until I reach pretty much like the top. That's right here. You are supposed to then turn it up like that. I'm gonna just tie this off with a modern hair elastic. So then I am supposed to pin it up to that cushion, which apparently isn't as optional as I thought. So I'm just gonna pin it to my head then. It's gonna be a little bit less voluminous maybe than it should be. And now with the ends, I think I'm just gonna tease those and try and incorporate them maybe into the rest. Ooh, maybe I can make another one of those curls. I have no idea what I'm doing, by the way, from behind now. So I hope this looks semi-good. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check. See how I look here. Hmm. <laughs> okay, those dangling curls, they're not good. I have decided to turn those into more of these, like, egg-like rolls. <laughs> egg rolls, wow. I think this is gonna be it. I have three rolls up on my braid now. What I'm supposed to do is just go over with an insane amount of powder, if I understand correctly. I know they use these kind of almost bellows-like machines that would just blow huge amounts of powder onto the client's head. Don't have access to that, so I'm just gonna use my brush. This is my final result. Can't say I'm super happy with it. It is very messy, very messy. It is probably the messiest one I've done so far. I feel like I've had better 18th century looking up dues when I use techniques that I actually know how to do. But of course the whole point of this was trying to use the authentic techniques or at least trying to follow a written tutorial. Trying to follow a written tutorial is just incredibly difficult. He was right, the back looks very awkward and very messy. 
I'm definitely not happy with that. I feel like I should have a lot more volume in the back, but I feel like this is the part where that whole cushion business should go that I just don't understand. No matter how often I read, I just can't grasp what's supposed to be going on there. If I had a visual example, it would be so much easier to do, even if I just had one image of the finished result, but there isn't any in the book. Then again, I am very glad I did try some of those techniques. I'm very glad I tried pomade. Some parts of this do look more authentic, definitely the color and the firmness of the whole thing, even though I still feel like I didn't tease it correctly because it is coming down. Just because this took so long, it is a quarter to eight now. I started at two o'clock. So I feel like a part of this is just a personal failure. I'm just exhausted and I just can't go any longer. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there'll be links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There's another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye! Dun 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 dun